You want a war? You're gonna get one. Forget the lies, the money. We're in this together and through it all. They said that nothing's forever. Another week, another episode of Reliving the War. It's the 13th of October 1997, WWF Raw's a tape show from Topeka, Kansas, while Nitro's live from Tampa, Florida. No time to waste this week because we've got an absolute ton to get through. The WWF are now also ramping up the amount of promos and matches during their Monday night broadcasts and there's absolutely no chill this week. So let's get started with episode 103 of Reliving the War. The Legion of Doom are going to get a tag title shot tonight and the opening video celebrates Hawk and Animal. Jim Ross provides a voiceover here and he talks about how great the Road Warriors are and how great the Road Warriors were. He talks about their accomplishments in the past and the gold they've won in different promotions. Tonight they want to become the WWF Tag Team Champions once again and if they don't, they're going to retire. This kind of came out of nowhere. WCW show starts up right away with the opening promo, no messing around, so we start this week's episode with an NWO promo on Nitro and a Heart Foundation promo on Raw. Hulk Hogan doesn't have his WCW championship while the macho man Randy Savage got himself a new neck brace. Last week Roddy Piper took Hogan's belt after that big fight and he didn't give it back. Macho took the diamond cutter on the floor and it messed up Randy pretty bad. Bischoff promotes Hogan's new crappy film that's airing on TNT. Eric says, with a grin on his face that the competition on the other channel is live next week and they'd absolutely hate if these posters showed up on their TV show and he urges fans not to bring Assault on Devil's Island signs to Raw. Oh, I'm sure no one will Eric, don't worry about it. Hogan says when you mess with the madness and when you mess with Hollywood, you mess with the whole NWO for life. There's no excuse for what happened to Randy last week and Roddy Piper should be preventing this kind of stuff, not creating it. Hulk says he's gonna take take matters into his own hands and help out his best friend Randy Savage. And as for Piper holding on to the NWO belt, Hulk says Roddy had to steal it because he can't beat Hulk Ford fair and square. The NWO knows that Piper's gonna be in the building tonight, so the boys plan on getting Hogan's belt back and teaching DDP a lesson for what he did to the Macho Man. Eric says no one leaves the building tonight until Hulk gets his championship belt, and the commentators then run down tonight's matches. The tag team titles are on the line as instructed last week by Piper, the Outsiders defend against the Steiners, and the US titles on the line in the main event when Kurt Hennig defends against DDP. Yeah. The Hitman gets in the ring to say a few words and Vince McMahon lets us know that the British Bulldog isn't here because he's celebrating both an anniversary and his birthday. Uh, yeah, that's a fucking lie. McMahon understands that Brett's in a bad mood about what happened last week, but before His Excellency gets a chance to speak, he gets immediately interrupted by Shawn Michaels and his cronies. Shawn says Brett's getting old and he's been jerking the curtain on Shawn's pay-per-views recently, but HBK says he has something to show Brett. Michaels says nobody knows Canada like Shawn knows Canada, and there we go. Triple H wonders if this tickled HBK's brain. Hunter says he's younger than Brett, he's better than Brett, and he's better bigger than Brett. In more ways than one. Good God, you're gonna put an eye out with that thing. We see footage of the super kick from last week and Brett loses his temper. He calls Hunter and Sean degenerates before challenging either of them to step into the ring right now. Sean says he doesn't need to because he beat the hitman back at WrestleMania 12 and he's gonna beat him again at Survivor Series. Triple H pretends to get all fired up looking for a fight but then he starts laughing while saying he already beat Brett last week and he too doesn't need to do it again. Sean says he's sick of Generation X getting a bad rep and he asks Hunter if he's a degenerate. Michael says he knows for a fact that he himself is one and Hunter guesses that he's one too. HBK says he, Hunter, China and Ravishing Rick are now known as Degeneration X. You make your rules and we will break them! Yeah! Brad says DX won't make it to Survivor Series. 
McMahon tries to continue the interview, but then the Nation of Domination show up, the interview's over, Kama takes on Owen Hart in our Raw opening match. I don't know if it's because I'm looking out for it with the benefit of hindsight, but Brett really looks angry and a little fed up here. He now knows for sure he's leaving the WWF and it's such a change here compared to just a month or two ago when the Hart Foundation were riding high. You can feel the faction getting fizzled out, they're no longer the most important aspect of WWF television and that's a shame, because their short run as the company's top heels was brilliant. Every week now on Reliving the War we're gonna see changes and things happening that shape what the WWF would soon become. It's been happening really since SummerSlam 1997. So we have Kama vs Owen Hart and over on Nitro we've got Psychosis vs Eddie Guerrero. You'll need to forgive me this week as I'll only be briefly talking about some of these matchups. There's way too much going on in both shows but trust me, I've watched these in advance and I've picked out the best stuff. The cruiserweight belt was on the line here on Nitro and Sonny Ono did not come to the ring with Psychosis. Eddie Guerrero meanwhile was in tremendous shape around this time period too and even the commentators mention how lean Eddie looks when he drops Psychosis with a back suplex. Psychosis put Eddie down with a top rope wheel kick and then he pulled off this incredible senton from the top turnbuckle to the outside. Mike Tanay lost his mind here, but the good fortune came to an end when Eddie dodged the top rope splash. Eddie then caught Psychosis and he drove an E into his side, but his follow up powerbomb was countered with another wheel kick. Psychosis goes up top again, he performs another spinning wheel kick, so I guess that's a... Psychosis spinning wheel kick or spinning in kick doesn't bother. Psychosis went up again and that's one time too many good sir. Eddie delivers a superplex, he then hits the frog splash and Eddie retains the cruiserweight title. He then tries to take off Psychosis' mask but he can't do it. The challenger leaves the ring and this was a pretty solid opening match. Notice anything else here though? Yeah, the Nitro debut of Lil Nate Charles Robinson. Kama Mustafa vs Owen Hart then. We go to commercial break after the nation's entrance and then D-Generation X show up. After goofing around on the entranceway they make their way to the commentary table and they take over the headsets. So we have the nation on one side of the ring, the hearts on the other, and DX over here calling the action. This is a gang fight we could really enjoy if they end up fighting. Hunter says Owen's on his back, typical Hart Foundation action. Owen hits a missile dropkick on Kama as Sean and Hunter rip into Bret Hart, calling him the king of charisma. And as Kama begins laying in the punches and kicks in the corner, Rick Rude hands the boys a few bananas. Jerry Lawler's sucking up the DX and Sean cuts him off. Lawler seems a little taken back here. HBK says he worked for Lawler a long time ago when the king called the shots, but he doesn't call the shots anymore. Sean does. Sean then orders China to smack Jerry as he tries to hand over his headset to the ninth wonder of the world. And it's a very awkward exchange, do check it out. But enough of that shit, there's a chin lock and Davey isn't around to witness it, he's celebrating his unbirthday. Rick Rude's getting in on some banana action as Triple H takes notice of our favourite wrestling hold here on Reliving the War. I'd say that's gimmick infringement brother, but I'll let it slide. As Owen fights out, DX begin making fun of Stu Hart, saying he's dead but he doesn't know it. Sean then begins taunting Brett and the hitman says that's enough. He goes to attack Sean but the nation jump the hitman, and the match ends in disqualification as Owen and Kama get involved in the fight. Sean, <laughs> Sean lies on the ground and he gets a great view of the nation attacking the hearts. He starts beating Brett with his big floppy banana skin. Sean and Hunter just watch as these two factions beat the hell out of each other. Some fans are booing, some fans are laughing. HBK then drops his banana on Brett's head before scurrying off and he acts like a jackass while heading back up the ramp. I get that many of you watching this series won't be big DX fans, but you gotta admit, this was pretty amusing. Brett, on the other hand, didn't find any of this amusing. After the bout, another Legion of Doom highlight video plays. These little videos would play all through Raw, and I even remember back then thinking that the Legion of Doom were winning the tag team titles tonight. The WWF went a bit overboard with all the Hawk and Animal clips. Mosaic and Tarantula take on Max Mini and Nova next, a bad blood rematch. On Nitro, Roddy Piper cuts a promo. Very quickly, Max Mini and Nova defeated Mosaic and Tarantula. Referee Tim White completely forgot himself and he almost counted to four. Not sure what happened there, but yeah, it happened. 
The match was more or less just like the Bad Blood encounter, but it had a pretty bad botch here when Nova landed on his head. Mike Kyoto came down to check on Nova after the match, but thankfully he was able to get back in the ring and celebrate after the bout. On Nitro, Mike Tenay shows us the Mexico City workshop of Victor Martinez. Victor designs and creates luchador masks. Rey Mysterio Jr. sits with his uncle Rey Mysterio, and the elder Mysterio talks about how devastating it was to lose his mask. Dr. Lechuga here tells us that the masks are contemporary reminders of great Aztec warriors and forgotten Indian rituals. In Psychosis, Rey Mysterio Jr. and La Parca talk about the importance of their masks, while Eddie Guerrero remembers losing his hair in a mask versus hair match in the past. Again, it's great that WCW took time to put these videos together, and it gives us good but brief insights into the world of Lucha Libre. Roddy Piper comes out and he says he's the boss, not Eric Bischoff. He says what happened to Randy Savage last week was justice, and as for Hulk and his world belt, Hogan doesn't deserve it. He's painted on it, he plays air guitar with it, so Roddy's put the belt somewhere Hulk will never find it. Piper says the outsiders have been crying about having to defend the tag team titles tonight, they're complaining about being hurt, but if the outsiders don't compete, the belts will get vacated tonight on Nitro. Mean Gene then announces that Six will defend the tag team belts along with Scott Hall, so the Freebird rule is once again coming into play on Monday Nitro. The Battle of the Steves takes place next on Nitro when Steven Regal takes on Stephen McMichael. On Raw we have an interesting one, Shawn Michaels vs Flash Funk. Before the Raw match, we see a clip from Shotgun Saturday Night. The Honky Tonk Man cost Rockabilly a match against Flash Funk when he tripped up Billy from the outside. Jesse James then showed up, he's ditched the real Double J gimmick, and now he's the Road Dog. Very similar to his previous roadie gimmick he had with Jeff Jarrett. And James convinced Rockabilly to smack Honky Tonk with his guitar. Rockabilly and the Road Dog are now a team it seems, we'll have to see how this one plays out. I would have really liked to have seen a Shawn Michaels vs Flash Funk match, but it doesn't happen, because the devil's favourite demon shows up and he completely wrecks Funk. It's still good, but I would have preferred Funk vs Michaels. Anyway, we see the chokeslam, we see the tombstone, and Paul Bear says afterwards that he and Kane will take away everything The Undertaker has ever dreamed of. Human eye has not seen and human ear hasn't heard what Kane has in store for his big brother, and Kane's gonna continue his path of destruction through every WWF superstar until he reaches the phenom. Enjoy this guys, there's nothing quite like the original version of The Undertaker's little brother. That no good son of a gun Shawn Michaels then shows up, he pins Flash Funk, Hunter gives a slow Hebner count, China rings the bell and Rick Root announces Shawn is the winner, accidentally but not accidentally calling Shawn the Pecon instead of the Icon. Yeah, that one fell a little flat. HBK acts like he just won the world title as Flash Funk thinks of one of two things. He's either saying, I hate my job, or he's saying, easiest payday ever. Over on Nitro, I was a little worried for our main man Steve McMichael because old Regal can get a little snug every now and then, especially when it comes to guys who haven't been around the block a few times. You can see, however, that Regal adjusted for Mongo here and he did not wrestle his typical style. Regal does catch Mongo out a few times, but really, this this is a 3 minute match where Regal just bumps around the ring for a bit. Mongo wins with the tombstone. Afterwards, Mean Gene Okerlund interviews Deborah, and Mean Gene announces that Jeff Jarrett has left WCW. Pretty noteworthy news. It's not like Jeff wasn't getting heavily featured or anything. It turns out his contract expired and Jeff has just decided to move on. He explains his decision brilliantly in this video here on YouTube, check it out when you get a chance. But in short, he wasn't too enamoured with the booking committee, Bischoff, Sullivan, Hogan and others all booking the same show, and he pretty much knew early on that he wouldn't stick around after his contract expired. But yeah, Jesse James dropping the real Double J moniker now makes a lot more sense. Deborah says Jeff's gone and Mongo thinks this is awesome. She says she has a big surprise for Mongo though at Halloween Havoc, so it looks like Deborah's WCW career will still be on the line in a match at the pay per view. Who Mongo's gonna face though is a complete mystery. You get back home and get in that kitchen where you can really be a star. Tell her! Rattle those wow. pots and pans. The biker Michael Likers took on the Commission of Truth next on Raw. On Nitro, we've got Yuji Nagata vs Chris Jericho and Bill Goldberg vs Scotty Riggs. These gang wars are starting to cause me a great deal of concern. They're making reliving the war so damn repetitive. 
Things are a little different here though because the Commandant is no longer leading the Truth Commission. Don Callis, known here as the Jackal, is now leading the boys and there's no explanation why. Though apparently Vince McMahon wanted someone who could bump around while also acting as a mouthpiece for the most uncharismatic faction in WWF history. Callis is as generic as they come here when he says the DOA's joyride over the WWF comes to an end. We have got Sniper Elite and Ghost Recon taking on 8-Ball and Skull in this tag team match, and the commentators use this match to talk about politics, not joking. This kind of agenda pushing bullshit would go right over my head in 1997 because I was a kid and I had no clue at all about American politics. It happened more than once and you know maybe some of you guys like this kind of conversation during wrestling matches but it's not for me. Obviously Janet Reno extremely angry at Attorney General. Very angry with uh, President Clinton as of late. Why do you think she's so hot, Eddie? Jackal pulls the top rope down and this leads to a DQ finish. The DOA then say, ah, you got us there, good match lads, and Raw moves on to its next match. Nah, no, I'm just joking, they all fight as usual with neither team getting the upper hand. Sonny Ono is now with Yuji Nagata and Mike Tanay says this explains why Psychosis came to the ring on his own earlier. It looks like Ono's moved on. Ono explains in a split screen interview that his mission hasn't changed. Ultimo Dragon needs to be destroyed and Yuji Nagata gets a chance to do just that at Halloween Havoc. Ono says at the pay per view he's gonna collect the debt that Dragon can never repay. So if Dragon can never repay this debt, how's Ono gonna collect it? You then know for a fact that Nagata's winning this match, seeing as WCW just announced this Halloween Havoc bout, and Sonny Ono would play a role in Nagata's victory. Jericho pie faced Sonny on the outside before climbing up for an aerial attack. Sonny then pushed Chris off the top rope, Nagata then applied the Nagata lock, and Jericho has no choice but to top out. After the bout, we see Raven sitting beside a cot, and he's gonna talk a whole lot of shit, I assume. He says his earliest memories aren't of events but of feelings he had, feelings of loneliness, abandonment and sadness. He's such a troubled soul, isn't he? He talks about these early years being a critical juncture, how we're all prisoners of our own nature. He then ends it with, I could never sooner change the path I was placed upon than I could stop a swallow from migrating or a salmon from spawning. So it's written, so it should come to pass, quote the raven nevermore. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thanks Raven. Raven and Saturn are then seen watching the Riggs vs Goldberg match. They have been joined by Sick Boy, although he hasn't been officially named yet. You may or may not remember this guy as Lance Ringo, the guy who thought it was a good idea to taunt DDP with Kimberly Page's photo shoot on Nitro, only to get the shit slapped out of him and diamond cuttered into oblivion. Anyway, Riggs vs Goldberg. Goldberg defeated Roadblock on Saturday night so he's 3-0 going into this match, and the commentators acknowledge it too. We see the spear for the first time on Nitro with Scotty's head getting slammed to the mat in the process. Riggs fought back and he managed to dropkick Goldberg out of the ring but fighting on the outside was a big mistake. Riggs gets dropped on the guardrail before the match gets back inside, and the jackhammer ensures Goldberg gets another win on Nitro. The official number is now 4-0. It's worth noting that WCW audiences were already being very responsive and receptive towards Goldberg. It's remarkable how popular this guy would become in such a short period of time. Steve Austin's gonna cut a promo on Raw while Six and Scott Hall defend the tag team championships against the Steiner brothers. Vince McMahon hopes Austin's gonna sign this new contract he has, a contract that will bring Austin back to in-ring competition at the 1997 Survivor Series where he'll face Owen Hart for the IC title. Austin wants McMahon to sign it first. Vince says it's just the same document Austin looked over earlier on but Stone Cold doesn't care. McMahon signs the contract, Austin says we've got a deal and he goes to walk away. McMahon Man pulls Austin back and he tells him he needs to still sign his name. That's the only way he's gonna get Owen Hart. Stone Cold hesitates for a moment, he then gets on the middle rope and he signs the contract. Austin says he has one thing left to do. McMahon shits himself here, but Austin says McMahon has to shake his hand and make it a done deal. McMahon eventually extends his hand, Austin pulls him in, and Austin warns Vince that he could have took him out right there and then if he really wanted to. McMahon again stops Austin from leaving the ring, this dude's got a death wish. He wants to know why Austin did what he did at Bad Blood, and Austin confirms he wanted Owen Hart for the IC belt. He has no problem with Farouk or the Nation of Domination, but Austin wanted the IC title match with Owen Hart. 
The nation then appear at the entranceway and Ferg said Austin crossed the railroad tracks at Bad Blood. Austin's offered himself as a sacrifice to Ferg and the nation by costing Ferg the IC title at the pay-per-view. Austin says he didn't understand a single word Ferg just said, but it sounds like he wants a fight, so he challenges any member of the nation to come down to the ring for an ass whooping. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Oh, 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 here it comes, here it comes. Ah, the heel Rocky Maivia takes a stunner from Steve Austin. Austin leaves through the audience before the nation can launch an attack. So, Austin's gonna compete at Survivor Series, he plans on getting some revenge for SummerSlam, and it looks like a feud with the Nation of Dominations also on the cards. LOD then cut a promo and they say tonight's the night where the Road Warriors find out if they have the desire to become tag team champions. They screwed up their last title shot against Owen and Davey, but Animal says they won't be like Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, guys who live in the past. So if the Road Warriors can't cut it tonight, they promise to leave the WWF and retire for good. Scott Hall conducts his survey and it's one more for the good guys. Scott says WCW are doing all they can to hurt the NWO. Lex Luger and Larry Sabisco couldn't beat Hall together on their best day and as for this tag team title defence, the match was booked when WCW knew Big Kevin Nash was out after knee surgery. Still, the NWO are the working man's champions and the people's choice. If the Steiners want a tag team title shot, they've got it. Someone threw some garbage at Hall and it's another fine shot. Even Six had to give a little sarcastic clap as Hall continued on. There's an incredible atmosphere for this tag team match and the crowd loved every moment of it. The Steiners clear out the ring to begin with and when things settle down, Six takes this wheelbarrow slam right here and the audience lose their minds. The dogface Gremlin completely mauled Big Scott Hall and Rick almost won the match after a Steiner line, but Scott replied by catching Rick in midair and we see the fallaway slam. It turned into a pretty typical WCW tag team affair next with the heels making quick tags and the babyface desperately trying to get his corner. A failed Bronco Buster gave Rick the opening he needed and Scott Steiner totally ruled the ring after getting tagged in. Back body drops, double underhook slams, military press slams, the fans couldn't get enough. Six takes to the Steiner DDT and that should have been it all over. But Scott Hall pulls Charles Robinson out of the ring and WCW's newest referee gets taken out. Larry Sabisco then walks down the entranceway and Hall gets thrown back in the ring. Rick hits the second rope bulldog, Six and Hall get covered. Larry Sabisco makes the three count and Tony Schiavone announces we have new tag team champions. We'll have to wait and see if this officially stands and I think it's going to be highly unlikely, but still a very entertaining matchup that got the crowd going nuts from bell to bell. Quickfire round. Brian Christopher vs Tajiri on Raw, Dean Malenko vs Rey Mysterio on Nitro. I honestly forgot Tajiri made this many appearances on WWF television before the ECW buyout. Brian Christopher was his usual slimy self in this matchup, mocking Tajiri at the beginning and laughing like a lousy stinking hyena every time his opponent went down. There was nothing funny about this double knee drop though that missed its target, that didn't look too pleasant did it? Christopher gets the win after grabbing the tights. The light heavyweights are kinda stagnating at the moment with no real further developments happening in the division. This does change very soon though. Tajiri kicked Christopher out of the ring following the final bell. On Nitro, Ray tried to give his outer mask to a very young fan at ringside and the little guy was like, absolutely not. Take this thing back, you strange, strange man. A blend of high flying and technical excellence here, from big impact counter moves to devastating chin locks. Both competitors showed respect to each other throughout this hard fought match, but someone who didn't show respect was one Eddie Guerrero. Ray was just about to win with a West Coast pop, but Eddie appeared from nowhere and he took Ray's mask. Mysterio's face could be seen on TV momentarily, and according to Mysterio himself, he wasn't very comfortable with any of this. We'll talk about this a little more next week and at the pay per view, but Eddie cost Ray the victory here on Monday Nitro. Dean was able to lock in the cloverleaf and win via submission. Cornette's commentaries next up on Raw while Roddy Piper cuts another promo on Nitro. So this Cornette promo is all about Phil Mushnick, sports columnist for the New York Post. Mushnick's been a long term detractor of pro wrestling but around this time period he wrote an article stating McMahon's perpetration of steroid use led to the death of Brian Pillman. Let's note a few things Cornette says here in regards to Phil Mushnick. 
Phil hates pro wrestling and he wants fans to stop watching WWF, WCW and ECW. He's been leading a one-man campaign to have the whole wrestling industry abolished. When Ted Turner donated $1 million to charity, Mushnick felt the world would have been better served if Turner closed WCW instead. Phil called for and spearheaded the media barrage during McMahon's 1994 federal indictment. Mushnick continues his one-man crusade by acting like McMahon was never found innocent. He suggested that Madison Square Garden should stop hosting wrestling matches, and he hates wrestling fans. Cornette reads an excerpt from a recent Mushnick article insulting parents who bring their kids to wrestling shows, and Cornette says he's a wrestling fan and he doesn't like being insulted in a newspaper that he pays to read. Cornette calls Phil pompous and self-righteous while saying it's an American right for people to have freedom of speech, freedom of choice, and freedom to enjoy whatever forms of entertainment they choose. Mushnick looks down on wrestling fans and he'll do it any way he can. Cornette brings up the fact that Phil used Brian Pullman's death to call for another public outcry at pro wrestling. Cornette says Brian was a friend of his, a man who had the courage to go through 30 throat operations. He went through 10 years of punishment in pro football and 10 years of punishment as a pro wrestler. He had the courage to come back after a car accident shattered his ankle among other personal tragedies. One night Brian went to sleep in his hotel room and Brian Pullman died. Cornette says, for Phil Mushnick to use Brian Pullman as a call to action in his one-man vendetta, that's way more vulgar and obscene than anything Phil has ever accused the wrestling business of ever being guilty of. So, on behalf of wrestling fans around the world, the wrestling industry, the friends and family of Brian Pillman, and on behalf of anyone in the country who denies any one man pushing their morals and their beliefs on everyone else while trying to take away constitutional rights, Phil Mushnick can go to hell and try to reform things down there. Yeah, there's two ways of looking at this one really, and it's completely your call which side you're on. What can't be denied though is Cornette's insanely good delivery and the passion he speaks with. In terms of sending a message, no one could do it quite like James E. Cornette. Mean Gene wants to know if Rick and Scott are truly the tag team champions, and Roddy Piper confirms that Larry Sabisco is an official WCW referee. He was sanctioned last week. Therefore, the decision stands, and the Steiner brothers are the new tag team champions. Color me surprised. Piper noticed Hulk Hogan didn't come down to help Six and Hall, and that's because Hollywood's getting ready for the biggest cage match in professional wrestling history. And right at that moment, Bischoff and Randy Savage walk down to the ring. Bischoff calls Piper a junior wannabe commissioner who needs to pay for a few things. Savage's neck brace is the result of Piper's bad leadership, so Roddy needs to answer for that. He also needs to return Hogan's world title and Bischoff also wants the tag team titles back. The decision from earlier on should not stand. Piper says it looks like the boys came to play, he gets ready to fight Eric and Savage, but then the rest of the NWO show up and Piper now has a problem. The crowd erupts when they think Sting's walking down to the ring, but it's a shit Sting. Piper thinks it's the real Stinger, but of course shit Sting attacks the hot rod. Turns out it's Hulk Hogan guys, I couldn't believe it, absolute shocker. Piper gets his ass kicked, he takes multiple leg drops, the NWO have a good old laugh, they share a few kisses. The question is, where are all these people Piper's been helping recently? Where were the Steiners? Where was Luger? Sabisco? Where was the real Sting? Where the fuck was the Giant? It doesn't make sense. Were they all in the restroom at the same time? Uh, I guess it's possible. Ray Trailer takes on Scott Norton next while Savio Vega battles Goldust. Marlene is back with Goldust and McMahon announces the renewing of the wedding vows has been cancelled out of respect for Brian Pillman and his family. The WWF are going to carry on like the storyline never happened. Vince then rips in the Hulk Hogan on commentary, jokingly saying that Hulk told him if no holds barred didn't make any money he would return his salary. He also notes that Hulk has a new movie coming out and Hogan's got a full head of hair in the film. And Vince says watching the Hulkster act is just as painful as watching him try to wrestle. Quick plug guys, I post some of these clips on Twitter, if I played them the whole way through on YouTube the video would get taken down. So jump over to the Bird app if you want to hear McMahon tear Hulk a new one. 
No nerve pinch action in this match unfortunately, but plenty of tongue action. Salvio made the mistake of approaching Marlena and this leads to, oh no wait, it was a genius move by the leader of Los Bariquas. There's a fan here shouting USA at Salvio while holding a crutch that's got an American flag attached to it. Why? Marlena ends up throwing her lit cigar into the ring. The distraction allows her to hand Goldust her brick loaded purse and Goldust has to effectively cheat the win. I get it being rebellious and breaking the rules was all the rage, but it also didn't suit Goldust and Marlena around this time period. I think the WWF were just unsure what to do now with the original angle getting scrapped. Ray Trailer seemed to have a good thing going just a few short weeks ago, but that all came crashing down after this match here with Big Scott Norton. The match itself isn't the big story here, oh no. Squeaky clean do-gooder, guy that helps old ladies across the road, no, guy that stops his car to help old ladies across the road, straight A student, a guy who's actually loved by his parents. I'm talking about Billy Kidman. Billy Kidman has started shooting up and he's now part of Raven's little gang, a gang that's exploded in numbers over the space of two weeks. Kidman looks fucking wrecked dude, he looks like me after I finished editing Reliving the War. Kidman isn't editing YouTube videos though and I don't know what other way to explain this, but his new gimmick is basically Raven's little junkie friend. Seeing as we now have Sick Boy here too, I'm gonna hazard a guess and say Raven watched Trainspotting last week. Buff Bagwell tosses a spray can to Norton, Norton knocks out Trailer to get the win. I'm sorry for not talking about the match, but it wasn't great anyway. We all knew this Ray Trailer run was gonna get cut short. Junkie Kidman though is the big talking point and I swear to god, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when this got pitched. Hey Billy, you little jobber asshole, how about a new gimmick where you look like a full blown waster, scratching your neck and looking like absolute shit every week. Yeah, sounds good boss, pass me the needle, let's do it. Bratwursts are loaded, it's time to take care of this little disco bitch. Oh, big Bratwurst. Big Bratwurst. The battle for WCW's best dancer happens once again when Disco Inferno defends the TV title against Alex Wright. On Raw, Triple H battles the Patriot. It's been confirmed that Jacqueline vs Disco Inferno is gonna take place at Halloween Havoc, but the TV title won't be on the line, so Jackie saving Disco from losing the TV title a few weeks ago was absolutely pointless. Neither man get a chance to remove their jackets as a shoving match results in Disco getting floored. Wright performs a jumping back heel kick and he follows this up with a drop kick. Alex screams that the TV title belongs to him as he whips Disco with his leather jacket, as Wunderkind is all fired up tonight on Monday Nitro. The Inferno finally replies with a hip toss and he follows this up with a punch to the face. Wright gets pummeled in the corner as the commentators talk about the great improvements Disco's made as a performer, but then Disco takes a power slam and that conversation ends. Some Saturday Ride Fever gets followed up with a few boots as the crowd chant the F slur at Alex. This crowd didn't know greatness when it was standing right in front of them in luminous green trunks. Alex works on the lower back while Disco hangs over the apron. Back in the ring, Disco counters a hip toss with a backslide that only gets him a two count, and Alex replies by slamming Disco to the mat before hitting his vaulting body splash. Alex then goes to the top rope and he gets thrown off by Disco. Jackie then shows up as Disco continues his comeback. Jackie then tries to distract Disco and this leads to Alex performing a roll up, but Disco counters and he grabs the tights, resulting in Alex getting pinned and Disco retaining the TV title. Jackie points at the TV title when Disco gets out of the ring. Maybe she didn't get the memo about her Halloween Havoc match now being a non-title bout. Just like HBK vs Flash Funk earlier, Triple H vs The Patriot doesn't actually happen. As Captain America was making his entrance, Rick Rude appeared from behind and he threw his hot salted caramel latte all over The Patriot, and the magical briefcase comes into play once again. Dale Wiltz can't continue, so DX announced that Triple H is the winner of this hard fought match by default. Rick Rude comes back out and he's covered in coffee, and then Commissioner Slaughter comes down to the ring. While spitting all over Sean and Hunter, Slaughter says Triple H is 
signed to wrestle tonight, so he is going to compete. Triple H and Sean then have a quick word with Rude and the Ravishing One heads to the back. They have came up with some sort of idea, it seems. Slaughter says DX are showing a real lack of respect in the WWF. There's no respect for announcers, wrestlers, nor the owner himself. Sean then caves and he says he'll start showing the Sarge some respect before telling the commissioner to suck it. Ahmed Johnson's music plays in the arena and Ahmed walks out wearing some new ring gear. But again, the match doesn't get started. The Nation of Domination attack Ahmed and DX are able to escape. They sit on the rampway eating popcorn and they watch as Ahmed gets wrecked by the Nation. Professional lifesavers Hawk Animal and Ken Shamrock then run down to help out Ahmed. The Nation get cleared out of the ring while Sean and Hunter throw their snacks at the audience. Animal then grabs a mic and he says the LOD have one more thing left to prove. The Godwins get invited down to the ring to begin the Raw's War main event. LOD vs The Godwins is next on Raw while Diamond Dallas Page takes on Kurt Hennig on Nitro. Big main event Kurt Hennig eh, how on earth did this happen? I had a look at next week's Nitro and he's not in the main event so the run comes to an end, it was a little too much. Page softens up the shoulder and Kurt pulls the hair, Hennig runs out of the ring before Dallas can retaliate and Kurt's gonna take his sweet time here. The match resumes and we've got more hair pulling from Kurt, still Dallas almost delivers a diamond cutter and this leads to more stalling on the outside. Why does this always happen in Nitro main events? It wouldn't be an episode of Nitro either without guys spitting on each other so we've got some of that too, leading to more stalling again from Kurt on the outside and keep in mind the match is not at the halfway point. Back in the ring Kurt pulls the hair again and this leads to Dallas getting pushed into the corner. DDP takes a hard chop but he answers with a headlock takedown and he keeps the hole locked in when on the mat. Hennig once again pulls the hair when both men get back to their feet, but Dallas does the same thing to Kurt and the headlock stays applied. Kurt goes down after a shoulder block, DDP blocks a hip toss and then he delivers a Russian leg sweep. Kurt replies with a boot to the face followed by a lariat to the back of the head. After taking a few boots on the mat, DDP finds himself in a chin lock. When it gets broken up, Kurt lands a drop kick and he immediately applies another chin lock. That's two in quick succession guys, you love to see it. Kurt uses the ropes for leverage but Paige hangs in there. The two get to their feet, Hennig applies a sleeper but Paige counters with a jawbreaker. Kurt comically misses a big kick and this leads to Dallas hitting the pancake. DDP then signals for the diamond cutter, Hennig counters. And on the entranceway we see Ric Flair getting held back by security. Ric wants to get at Kurt Hennig. Kurt gets distracted and this allows DDP to pin Hennig and the referee counts to three. Flair chases Kurt out of the ring and the crowd begin to celebrate. We have a new United States Champion. DDP gets the belt and he holds it up in the air but Randy Anderson tells DDP it's actually a DQ finish due to Flair hitting the ring. Randy did count to three before he even noticed Rick but still Dallas is not the new United States Champion. Roddy Piper comes out after the commercial break and he's having words with Randy. He gets in the ring and he raises Dallas's hand. But before we can get a clear answer on what's going on, the new world order hit the ring. The numbers are just too great. Tony Schiavone says WCW needs help as Randy Savage drops multiple elbows and Hogan hits leg drops before giving Piper a weapon. Help comes in the form though of shit sting. And another shit sting. And another. There's another one. Oh, three more. Bobby Heenan says it stings our us tonight on Monday Nitro but the real sting is nowhere to be found. That dude right there though is the real sting, it's stingception once again on TNT. Buff Bagwell takes a scorpion death drop and the NWO clear the ring when they realise the real sting just arrived. Nitro goes off the air with Roddy Piper swinging Hogan's world title around. Hogan and company can do nothing but watch from outside the ring. Animal and Phineas start off the Raw tag team main event and Phineas gets dumped on the mat after applying a front face lock. Henry then tries his luck and he almost gets his arm pulled out of its socket before Hawk gets tagged in. An LOD chant breaks out as Hawk performs a jumping shoulder tackle but a back elbow stops the onslaught and Henry tags out. Phineas is unable to pick up where Henry left off as Hawk destroys the hog farmer in the corner with a series of chops and punches. Animal's now back in and he hits a jumping clothesline, it's absolute domination here from the road warriors. Animal delivers a big power slam before applying an arm bar and then the Godwins are finally able to do a little damage when Hawk gets tagged back in. We go to commercial break, we come back to see Henry and Phineas working well together to keep Hawk at bay but the crowd continues to chant LOD as Phineas delivers a jawbreaker. 
Hawk gets dumped out of the ring where Henry gets in a cheap shot. The Godwins think they have it all figured out when they begin the quick tags, but Hawk fires back by clotheslining both of his opponents and now he needs to tag out. Hawk makes the tag, but the referee doesn't see it, and this leads to Hawk taking a gut wrench suplex inside the ring, while Animal gets attacked by Henry and Uncle Cletus on the outside. Jerry Lawler laughs while saying the end is near for the Legion of Doom. Animal has to get escorted away by a bunch of officials. Apparently, he's too hard to continue after getting thrown into the ring steps. Both Godwins attack Hawk, and when Earl Hebner tries to get some order, he ends up getting slop dropped. Animal sees what's going on and he rushes back down to the ring. He cleans house with clothesline, suplexes, and drop kicks. Uncle Cletus stops a doomsday device, but it's also Uncle Cletus who ends up accidentally hitting Henry with his good luck horseshoe. Phineas tries to hit a pile driver on Animal, but Hawk jumps off the top rope with a clothesline. Phineas gets pinned, and the Legion of Doom become the new WWF Tag Team Champions. The crowd celebrates as LOD become two-time tag champs while the Godwins completely lose their shit. They attack Uncle Cletus, Cletus gets annihilated by Henry and Phineas, and the Godwins scream all you had to do was hit him as Raw fades to black. Nitro wins Reliving the War this week. I was almost going to go with a tie, but I actually enjoyed Nitro more the more I thought about it. Eddie removing Ray's mask, Six and Hall vs the Steiner brothers, Stings R Us at the end of the show, DX not performing on Raw was a bit of a kick in the balls, and I know that's exactly what it was supposed to be, but still, Triple H or Sean actually performing could have tipped things in Raw's favour. Instead, we got what many would consider as just mid-card matches this week on Raw's War. On our leaderboards, Raw and Nitro have 45 points each, and we have still got 13 ties. In the TV ratings, Raw dropped considerably to a 2.3, while Nitro gained a 3.8. Next week on WCW Nitro, Chris Benoit battles Eddie Guerrero. The Disco Inferno's back in action against Rey Mysterio, and the steel cage hangs from the ceiling as Hulk Hogan delivers a final message to Roddy Piper before Halloween Havoc. On Raw, Bret Hart takes on Farouk after the nation's locker room gets trashed, Shawn Michaels takes on Owen Hart, and take a look who shows up on Raw. Should be an interesting one next week guys, so I hope to see you then. Thank you for watching Reliving the War, and take care.